Hi, my name is Rose. I'm from Elm Gordo, New Mexico, and my bird's name is Sailor. She is a two and a half year old green wing hybrid, so technically a Jubilee. tricks just by chance um, with a random YouTube video that was recommended to me about four or five years ago. I had parrots when I was younger but I never thought that I would have them again because of the cage guilt and when I found you guys I was like this is possible like I had no idea um, and I just have been obsessed with parrots again ever since. I chose Jamie and Dave as my trainers because for one, they lived in the West, which is somewhat close to me. Moab is a drivable distance for me to achieve. And I liked their emphasis on the psychology of the bird um, when it comes to behaviors and energy levels and the fact that flight is necessary for a healthy bird. They were the first that kind of phrased it that way. They just had the, the most similar frame of thinking that I had with birds. Sailor was about six to eight months old when she got out of the house by accident. I was transferring her to a cage on my porch and I tripped and she just took flight. For a second I thought she was going to stop on our fence and she just caught the wind and was like, I'm out of here. Um, she went behind a tree but she was calling to me and she couldn't descend, but she was doing everything else right. She was turning, she was doing contact calls, and she wasn't leaving the area. Um, and she finally just crash landed on the neighbor's roof and I ran up there and got her and she was exhausted and terrified. We hear that same story with different outcomes, mm -hmm. like all the outcomes, all the time. My consults with Jamie specifically were all focused on diet and making sure that Sailor was not getting any human snacks and on the seasonal feeding system, uh, pellets, so all of that. With Dave, it was the more hands-on recall training and really fine-tuning those uh, behaviors. The road trip from New Mexico to Utah, even though it was over two days, was a little too intense for my bird. Um, I found out about an hour in that she gets very car sick. It gave us a delay when we started here because we had to spend all this time really getting her healthy and happy and comfortable again. So that took a couple days. My first day out here with Sailor was a little rough. My expectations were set very high. I thought she was just going to come out here and rock it. And she may have if she hadn't gotten so sick coming out here. So it was a failure on my part to prepare her for the trip. Even though I was taking her in the car in town, you know, 15, 20 minutes, a six hour day one is not the way to do it. So again, just another learning experience. So it was just kind of desensitizing her to the environment that day. I believe we got a couple A to Bs. So we just spent time with her there in her crate. She hung out with everybody. You know, she's not used to seeing so many people, you know, running in so many different directions. So a lot of it was just letting her kind of see what the environment was gonna be like with the week to come. So it ended up being good on a long note, but at the time it was a little disappointing. <laughs> so Sailor had kind of a crappy day one yesterday. So Dave's gonna work with Sailor over here. And Rose, I have Claude and Sarah doing A to B's over here and I'm gonna have Liz and Reagan join them. I also put Tusa over here because I wanted to play too. So yeah. Sailor was struggling a little bit with uh, the travel period and so she's, uh, she's gonna do a little bit better today, I think. She looks better, she looks more active. Yesterday she just looked tired. Yeah, um, got the slow eye blink a lot. <laughs> the head rolled back and sleeping. <laughs> now she looks active, so. So we're probably gonna get some pretty big flights, is my guess, but we'll find out. Cool, let's do this. Yeah, when she was about six or seven months old, 
She got out of the house whenever I tripped. Are you handsome? Yeah. You're so good. She just did about two weeks around the property. About one acre and she crash landed on my neighbor's roof. Sailor! Come on! Don't get any ideas. Yeah. Sailor! She's gonna land on the rocks. Ah. Yep, she's landed. Where? She's right there. Was that, that little red thing? Oh, yeah. Good eye. Oh. Did she fly back or did you guys just grab she her? She had to go up and grab her. Oh, she looks exhausted. <laughs> she is like, what the hell? <laughs> Well, you can put her away for a little okay. bit, let her recover, offer some water. My experience with the Marshall GPS has been pretty great. Um, they just recently started supporting Android devices. Uh, Dave helped me walk through everything and, I mean, showing me all the capabilities of it, which was just awesome. Like, you can broadcast to anyone in the vicinity that has a cell phone. So if everyone is trying to look and recover your bird, they will be able to pinpoint exactly on their phones where the GPS is. Dave noticed in one of the training videos that I posted that I have netting above my cabinet, specifically garden trellis. He asked me about that and I explained that Sailor had a bad habit of hanging out on top of the cabinets and chewing the wood and causing chaos. So one of the things we worked on in the course was unwanted positions. And it was also kind of convenient because it also helped with her descending. But we just, I would go and put her on the cabinet and recall her down, put her on the cabinet, recall her down until she's like pinching me, like why are you putting me back up here? Yeah, it translated really well working outside because one of the first days she flew onto a vehicle and I was able to just recall her right back down from it. And she didn't struggle with it, which was like really awesome. <laughs> so let's keep her attention because she's... <laughs> Yeah, even a short little hop. There we go. Nice girl. Yeah. My favorite part of the trip has been our final full day here. And it was just so beautiful. There was not much wind, so it was perfect and warm. And we were at a location where we were able to fly the more advanced birds as well as birds like mine that are still beginners and getting used to everything. So we were able to really have everybody out and enjoy a really fun and just good last day. And she was just rocking it. So I couldn't be more than, more than happy. Little show offs. <laughs> Here's Yolo. <laughs> nice. Good job, Claude. Uh -huh. So I went skydiving with the group, um, heavily pressured by Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I felt like the, this whole trip has been very symbolic and overcoming fear and anxiety and I was one of those people that was like I would never do that that is so dumb why would you ever like take on the risk and but I have a fear of heights um, but I'm here like giving my bird her wings and I felt like if I don't do this I'm gonna look back and regret it so I just kind of mustered up what little courage I had. We went out there, had Dave's support, and we all jumped. And it was terrifying, and I'll never do it again, but it was, it's going to be a story worth telling. <laughs> so seeing everybody else the first few days, um, at the time was a little disappointing because everyone's progressing and I was kind of stuck in a lull. It was also really reassuring because everyone came to me and they were like, you know, my bird's first few days were this and that. So I had the support of the group as a whole and that made me feel a lot better because then I realized like my expectation was way 
beyond what I should have expected for my bird. So learning experience, but it was great having everybody in their stories and just reassurance that, you know, she's going to get there. They just got to, you know, be coached along. My goals with Sailor are to fly almost daily. I live on a really nice road out in the county and I take walks very frequently. So I want to be able to take her with me. And that kind of goes into why I even got a macaw rather than a smaller, way more convenient bird. Um, because we do, we do have occasional hawks and I wanted to make sure that I was doing this in the safest way possible. So of course, keeping in mind, you know, not setting up strict schedules of doing the same thing at the same time every day and getting into those kind of habits. I have to be mindful, but my goal is to always keep her flighted and to fly with her as much as possible and hopefully travel more if she gets used to the car. If you've ever considered free flying your bird and you have a bird, I would say do it because it's going to be beneficial for your bird if you ever have to recover it, if it gets out by accident, but also to their overall health and like well-being. I mean, think of kids locked up in a house with a bunch of energy all day and they have no way to really direct that energy, but flying, which is, I mean, they're born to do it. Why would you, why would you keep that from a creature like that? Jamie and Dave uh, did something new with me this kind of go around and they chose to fast track me through the course. I think they recommend typically three months of working with them to get to where you can go outside and free fly. Um, but I had already kind of established some really uh, basic prerequisites, which was the diet. Um, with Sailor, I had to not only wean her, uh, I had to also get her off of like the Petco pellets because I got weak in a moment and that was the only solid food she would take. And um, then it was just like basic recall and getting her to, even if it was, you know, using some kind of treat to lure her, it was, you know, establishing that kind of foundation of, I call and you come. Um, and so whenever I reached out to them, since I had these basic kind of elements done already, they were like, let's, let's try and get you in six to seven weeks and get you on the spring trip to Moab. And it worked.
thank you, Mom and Dad. You guys made this possible, so Aww. I appreciate you. <laughs>